Welcome back to our series on plant diversity and evolution. This is part two in our section on reproduction of seed plants. We'll look at the angiosperms, the flowering plants. In this video, we'll look at the parts of the flower, pollen development, egg development, pollination, fertilization, seed development, and finally fruit development. So let's get to it. We'll start with parts of the flower. When we look at the flower, we see down here we have the sepals. These were covering the flower when it was just a bud, protecting it, the growing bud. We have the petals. We'll talk about the function of petals later. We have the anther and the filament, which together make the stamen. Now this is the male structure of a flower. It's where pollen is produced. In the middle we have this vase-like structure, and at the top of which is called the stigma. The long, thin neck is called the style. And at the bottom, the swollen part, is the ovary. Together, these three parts make up the carpal, and this is the female part of the flower. Now what I've drawn here is what's generically called the perfect flower. It has both male and female parts. Some flowers might only have the female structures, and other flowers only the male structures, but uh, to simplify, I've just kind of done a generic flower here. We'll look at the male side first with pollen development in the stamen. If we look inside the anther, we see diploid cells. Remember, when you're looking at a flowering plant, you're seeing the sporophyte generation or the diploid generation. These cells inside the anther are called microspore mother cells. They're not spores, they're the mother cell to spores, specifically the microspores. So to become a haploid spore, we have to undergo meiosis. And inside the anther, then we build microspores. Now, if we recall, our alternation of generation life cycles, which is the basis of all plant life cycles, spores will become the gametophyte generation. So these spores will grow by mitosis to form pollen grains. Remembering that the pollen grain is the male gametophyte in flowering plants, in seed plants. So if we blow one of these up and look closer, here's the male gametophyte or the pollen. Inside the pollen there are two distinct cells, the tube cell and the generative cell. The tube cell will make a tube to the style to the ovary to aid in fertilization. We'll look at that shortly. And the generative cell will generate the sperm cells. So this is the gametophyte. This is not the male gamete. Pollen is not tree uh, sperm. It is the gametophyte. But it will be transferred from one uh, plant to the other. So here's a look at the whole process of pollen development inside the anther. The microspore mother cell undergoing meiosis to make the haploid microspores, the microspores developing into the pollen grain. All that happening in the stamen. Now, let's get back to our flower. Now let's look at what's happening on the female side of things, inside the carpal. If we zoom in, if we could look inside the ovary, we would see many structures, sometimes more than one, sometimes just one. These structures are egg producing structures. They're called ovules. So inside the ovary, there are ovules. Now for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to draw what happens in one ovule. So in an ovule, inside the ovary, again there's a diploid cell. This is the sporophyte generation. This is the megaspore mother cell. It's going to give rise to the megaspore. So this diploid cell undergoes meiosis, forming haploid megaspores. Now most of the time, all the megaspores except for one disintegrate. So only one megaspore survives. So there's our one megaspore. The spore that will become the gametophyte. So it'll divide and it goes through three rounds of mitotic division. So three nuclear divisions. So our one nuclei becomes two and the two become four and the four become eight. And then something very interesting happens. These eight nuclei are divided into their own cell through cytokinesis but we only have seven cells formed. Pause the video and think about what that means. Draw what it might look like. We have eight nuclei, but only seven cells. How about something like this? This is what it looks like. This is the female gametophyte. Now, when we look in here, let's see what we see. We have this cell which I've drawn in a different color to make it easy to see, but that's the egg. One of these haploid nuclei will be the egg. 
we have this special cell that has two haploid nuclei in it, and it's the endosperm mother cell. It will give rise to the endosperm. It's an N plus N cell. And then these other five cells, these other five haploid cells, we call them snurgids, which is one of my favorite words. They're unimportant cells. They're going to disintegrate, these two included, but I want to draw my arrows all over the place. But the snurgids, so we have this structure inside the ovule. So here's the whole side of the female uh, reproductive structures of egg development. So the megaspore, uh, mother cell becomes a megaspore. One of them survives and divides to make this structure inside the ovule prepared for uh, the sperm. So we have pollen made in the anther and the eggs are ready inside the ovule. So what do we need next? We need pollination. We have to get the pollen from a st uh, an anther to a stigma. Well, how can that happen? Well, wind, a lot of pollen is wind born, and even water, water can move pollen. But what do we think about when we think about flowers and angiosperms? The thing that's unique and different between angiosperms and gymnosperms is the use of, yeah, biotic vectors, which is a fancy way of saying pollinators, living things that move pollen from one. Now it's time to answer a question. What is the evolutionary significance of petals, nectar, the fragrance of flowers? Pause the video and answer the question. To attract pollinators. Now think about how important pollinators are to angiosperms. In fact, there's been a coevolution of flowers and uh, animals to uh, ensure or aid this process of um, the plant providing some nutritional value to the animals and the animals in turn moving the pollen from one flower to another to aid in reproduction. Okay, so here comes the pollen. Lands on the stigma. Pollination. Once we have this, we're ready for the next step, fertilization. And we're going to zoom in again to the uh, carpal, and here I put the pollen grain on top of it, and we can see the tube cell and the generative cell. And we're ready for the process of fertilization. We have our egg, but we don't have our sperm. We have pollen. So this is what happens. The tube cell is going to create a tube down through the style to the ovary. Then the generative cell is going to generate two sperm that travel down the tube. When they get here, they're going to have a double fertilization event. One of the sperm is going to fuse with the egg to make the zygote. The second sperm is going to fuse with the endosperm mother cell to make a triploid cell that's the beginning, to be the beginning of our endosperm, our nutritive tissue. Since there are two fusion events, we call this double fertilization. This is different between the gymnosperms and angiosperms. In the gymnosperms, we don't have this, the nutritive tissue, the endosperm is haploid, but in angiosperm, because of this unique uh, N plus N cell, the nutritive tissue is triploid, and it's fertilized by one of the sperms, so we have double fertilization. And what about all these snurgids? What happens to them? Well, they just go away. So now inside our ovule, we have the zygote and the growing endosperm. And they're going to start to grow and divide. So now let's look at embryo and seed development. The zygote in the ovule starts dividing by mitosis. And the embryo has lobes of meristematic tissue called cotyledons. So we'll let the embryo start to grow. The nutritive tissue around it, the endosperm, is triploid. By the time the embryo matures, the ovule becomes detached from the wall of the ovary. Its integuments start to thicken, forming the outer seed coat. So the ovule is becoming the seed. The embryo, the endosperm, the nutritive tissue surrounding it, and the seed coat constitute the seed. So the ovule was inside the ovary, and the ovule becomes the seed. Now these are angiosperms. In the uh, video where we introduced seed plants, we defined what angiosperm meant. It means covered seed. So here's a seed, and it's covered by something. 
But in that video, what did we say C to recover by? Write it down. Yes, fruit. So now we have to have fruit development. Let's put this back into the flower and see how the fruit develops. Well, the ovary of the flower is going to start to swell. And the petals of the flower start to break down and start to fall away. The uh, ovary continues to grow. The ovary becomes the fruit. Ovules are inside of ovaries. Seeds are inside of fruit. And if the ovule becomes a seed, the ovary becomes the fruit. Sometimes some of the other parts of the flower are incorporated into the fruit, but there we have it. The, um, the fruit is the mature ovary. Now some fruits are fleshy and some are dry like acorns and pea pods, but we have this question. What's the function of fruit? Pause the video and write down what you think the answer is. Now a lot of students will say that the function of fruit is to protect the seed. But hold on. Think about fruit. What's protective of a seed if the fruit encourages you to eat it? Think about that. And also think about other types of fruit. Anything with a seed inside of it is a fruit. So pea pods, the pod itself is the fruit and the peas are the seeds. Peanuts, the peanuts, this is a, a fruit by definition and inside are seeds. And we have seeds like all the nuts are, be, are, are fruits. Um, they're not the seed, the seed is inside there. And think about fruits like this. These little sand spurs that get on your shoelaces when you walk down by the beach or these which if you were an animal would catch into your fur and pull off. This is a fruit. This is a fruit. And what about this? Each of these little dandelion things that fly off caught by the wind, this is a fruit. Inside of that little pod right there is a seed. So what's the function of fruit? To aid in seed dispersal. To be caught by the wind or to float in the water or to even be eaten by an animal, go through the digestive tract, uh, protect it against the harsh enzymes and acids of the, the digestive system to be deposited somewhere else in its own little pile of fertilizer. It's the aid in seed dispersal which helps the plant survive. So the seeds uh, um, we talked about in the, in the seed plant video have an advantage of allowing us to move into a broader range of environment. But flowers and fruits have uh, evolved to aid in reproduction of plants and to spread the seeds. So that brings us to the end of our video on the angiosperm reproduction. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments section below the video, and I hope you learned something.